Uh, hello, Sanford. Uh, my name is Susu Zelafazi, a learner from Romondi High School, and these are the questions we'd like you to help us with. So according to this question, we are told that given the graph g of x equals a to the power of x, where a is greater than 0, passes through the point minus 1 and 2 over 3, uh, number 1, determine the value of a. All right. Now, let's analyze the given information. The only thing we have here that is given to us is the defining equation of this particular graph. And right off the bat, when you look at it, you can see that this is definitely an exponential function because your um, x is an exponent. And in addition to that, we know that this graph passes uh, at the point where x is minus 1 and where y is 2 over 3. All right. So now, in order for you to find the solution to this, I'm going to write here that g of x is a to the power of x. Then I'm going to proceed and say g of x is as good as y. So we're actually sitting with y is a to the power of x, which then means we can then substitute the coordinate of the point that was given to us for both x and y in order to be able to figure out what the value of a is going to be. So your uh, y value is clearly 2 over 3. I'm going to put 2 over 3 equals 2. The a value comes out as a, and the x value is simply negative 1. All right, now if you simplify this, we'll have 2 over 3 equals to a to the power minus 1. You invert that, it becomes 1 over a. Apply basic mathematics, cross multiplication. 2 times a gives us 2a, and 3 times 1 gives us 3. Eventually, we end up with an a value of exactly 3 over 2. All right. Let's move on to the second part of this question. Uh, it says to us, determine the uh, equation of the inverse of g, right, in the form y equals to whatever the case it might be that we are going to get on this question, right. Now, remember what we know so far. We know that g of x is equal to 3 over 2, right, to the power of x because we already found that the value of a is 3 over 2. All right, now we have to find the inverse graph. Now, every time anyone asks you to evaluate the inverse, you need to remember to interchange x as well as y. Wherever you see x, you put y, and wherever you see y, you're going to put x. So this is basically y is 3 over 2 to the power of x. Now, first things first, change x and y, interchange x and y in order to find the inverse graph. So if I interchange x and y, I'm simply going to have x here equals 3 over 2, and wherever we had x, we're now going to write the value of y. Now, using um, um, our laws of exponents uh, and our logarithm laws, there is something very important for us that we need to keep in mind, and that is the fact that if you have the log of a to the power of k, you can simply rewrite this as k log of a by just moving this exponent and putting it as a coefficient. So this is the first thing I want you to keep in mind as we are about to simplify this question. The second thing that I want you to keep in mind is that when I have the logarithm of a divided by the logarithm of b, I can simply express this as one log where the number on top becomes the same size, but the number at the bottom becomes the base of our logarithm. And this is the second thing I want you guys to keep in mind as we are about to simplify this question further. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce logs on both sides and try to apply basic laws of math. So on the left, I'll put a log of x equals to what you do on the left, mathematically speaking. You need to also do the same on the right hand side. All right, we also have a law of conservation in mathematics. It's not only in science where they have the law of conservation. What you do on the left, you do on the right. That is our law of conservation. All right, then I'm going to apply or engage this uh, idea here, guys, where we say take the exponent, write it in front of the log as a coefficient. Then we'll simply have the log of x is y. Uh, multiplied by the log of 3 over 2. Simple mathematics will tell you that in order to make y the subject of the formula, we need to divide both sides by the log of 3 over 2, and this side also by the log of 3 over 2. All right, then if you look on the right-hand side, log 3 over 2 will just divide log 3 over 2 off, leaving us with y equals to something very interesting. Now, look at that rule that I said uh, um, earlier on, this particular rule on the right-hand side. The second one, this one that you're looking at here on the far right corner, it says if you've got log of something divided by log of something else, you can compress that into one logarithm. The top number stays the same size, the bottom number becomes the base. So I'm sitting with the same scenario here. So I'm just going to say this is the log of x 
and the bottom number will just simply be the base 3 over 2 and this is the equation of the inverse graph of um, g as required to be expressed in the form y equals to something. All right. Now, the last part of this question, which is very exciting, says to us that we need to now sketch the graph of g and g of x, um, g and the inverse of g on the same set of axes. So we are provided there with the same set of axes that we can use to draw both these graphs. So in order to draw the exponential graph, guys, you can draw it manually um, or just by just knowing how the graph needs to look, the shape of the graph. Uh, you can just go and fetch a calculator and then substitute the values of x in the given equation and try to see where the graph is going to be uh, in this particular Cartesian plane. So I'm going to go and fetch the calculator and use it to see how I can actually figure out the corresponding x and y values for this particular graph. Remember, the graph of g is g of x equals to 3 over 2 to the power of x. All right. So let's see what will happen here when I call on the machine. Right, I'm going to just go to the mode, the table format, and then I'm going to press uh, open bracket. Let's get the fraction 3 over 2, and then close brackets to the power of a, uh, x, alphabet x there, equal to, the calculator is asking, where do you want to draw the graph? I want to draw it from minus 3, so I'm going to say, please start at negative 3. Where do you want to end with this graph? I also want to end at positive 3, stepping with 1. It will give me the y value, so the graph of g of x in this case. Don't mind the fact that it says f. It is the same thing. Right, so when, the, uh, when x is minus 3, the graph is going to be 0 0.29. So I've got 0 0.29 and 0 0.44 and then 0 0.6. So that's, that is as good as saying we've got 0 0.3. 0, 0,4 and 0, 0,7. Right, let's just try to plot that on our graph. When um, x is minus 3, the graph is somewhere there, 0, 0,3. When the graph is at negative 2, it's going to be somewhere at, uh, neg um, at uh, 0, 0,4. When you are at minus 1, it is going to be 0, 0,6. When you are at um, 1, it is going to be at 0. And we can clearly see this if you just press the down button in your calculator, you'll see 0 corresponds to 1. 1 is 1.5. And then 2 is 2.25, right, yes. So 1 is going to be 1.5, and 2 is going to be 2.25. So that is basically where the graph is. You just simply need to join these points. If I join them, this is what we will get as the graph of g of x, which is an exponential graph as we uh, expected it to be. Make sure it doesn't cut the x-axis because that is supposed to be the asymptote of our graph. And then now we need to draw the inverse graph. So the inverse graph is a log graph. It's very easy to draw the inverse graph if you have the equation of the original graph. Because what you're simply doing is you interchange x's and y values. What was x becomes y, and what was y becomes x. So if you look here, the original graph passes at a point when y is 0. It means the inverse will pass where x is actually equal to 1. So this one was when y is 1, the inverse will cut where x is 1. And then the other thing that I can actually put here is the fact that you can basically look at this particular point. The point 1 and 1.5 will be the other way around. So 1.5 and 1, it is basically going to sit there. And then the other one is 2, corresponds to 2.5. So it's going to be uh, inverted. It means 2.5 will correspond to 2, so it's going to pass there. And you can obviously carry on this argument. It will simply produce a shape that looks like that. And this is the graph of the inverse of g of x. Remember, this, these two graphs are symmetric about the line y equals to x. So I always like advising my learners to basically put the line of symmetry, which is a straight line that will pass through the origin, straight through like that as the axis of symmetry. That line that has a very nice equation, which you call the equation of the line y equals to x. And that is the axis of symmetry. So sometimes they ask you to actually write down the line of symmetry, which is the line y equals to x. And if they don't ask you, you don't really need to put it. But if you put it, you're always on the safe side.